have an individual. Uh, they are a business owner. So we have a business owner, and here's what went down. Okay, they gave me their numbers. Income is 8,552. Expenses, notice how they're $8,555.47. Hmm, so we're already negative. And their debt is 232,121. I believe they do have more debt, but they only, we only went over some specific things. What happened to him as a business owner is he had a partner. The partner pulled out of some investment deals or things that were going on. And so he took over some debts, which, excuse me, <clears throat> which put him in the negative, right? And so with the combination of velocity banking and debt snowball method, we're going to get his finances aligned to, you know, combat or react to that situation. Like in an event, you go negative, what do you do in terms of velocity banking, your finances, things like that? So the first thing is to cut back, obviously. So we have a potential cash flow gain of $579.79 if he redirects money that he's sending out towards expenses such as subscriptions, maybe cable, you know, things that are wants, not needs. If we can go ahead and get rid of that, that is a debt snowball strategy. That's part of, you know, something that Dave Ramsey is big on, cutting back, you know, minimalizing that type of thinking. You might have to go into what Grant Cardone calls conservation mode if we go negative so that we can, you know, keep our head above water. But that's just one method, right? So we have the potential to do that. So far, he redirected $350 of that, which when you minus it from the 8,555.47 from 350, you'll get a number. And then you minus 8,552 from that new number, we get 295.05 of net positive cash flow from redirecting 350. So we still have some more money that we can recoup there in the next month or two. But for the first month, we got 295.05. Okay, great. So now we're in the positive. The next move is we have this HELOC here for 14,900 as a credit limit, 6.5% is the interest rate home equity line of credit. The monthly payment on this HELOC is, let me look at my notes, it's 215 a month, the monthly payment. So if we combine Velocity Banking plus Debt Snowball, where we're sending all of our cash flow to a specific debt, instead of doing Debt Snowball where we go after this, you know, like the smallest debt, work our way up, what we're actually going to do is start with the debt tool being the line of credit. Here's where Velocity Banking comes in. And we're going to go ahead and dump all our income into the line, into the HELOC. So he owes 14,144, nearly maxed out. All income is going to go in. And what happens to his expenses is they, the expenses will drop by the amount of his monthly payment on the HELOC, right? Because that's less dollars that would be coming out of the HELOC to pay bills, right? So now I got 215 plus 295.05. Now I'm at, I think, $510.05 of cash flow. Not bad. We're getting somewhere. So over the next, I would say, six months, his primary goal is to bring that line of credit as close to zero as possible, right? If we can, let me see the math on 579, 79 minus the 350 that we did recoup. So I've got $229.79 that I can also recoup over the next you know couple months. So let's say by month two or three, he does that. So we got the 229 plus the 215 plus the 29505. Look how we go from negative like $55 and five cents to $739 and 84 cents in about a two month time frame just by 
combining these two concepts together to you know really maximize our dollars so let's say the first month it was the cash flow of the 510 right and I'll go I'll go two months of 510 cash flow and in the third month I'll jump it back up to 739.84 as a um, total all right so we got 14,144 is the balance on the HELOC 8500 goes in expenses come out balance on the HELOC goes to 13,633 95 plus some interest and we're going to do it again minus 8500 income plus expenses 7990.47 13,123 90 plus some interest might be we might be looking at a little over $100 in interest 6.5% or less could be less um, just depends on how he you know how often he's taking the money out and whether he's doing it in chunks or like how I like to do it every every 3 to 5 days I'll pull money out of the HELOC back to my checking account. Checking account pays my bills. And then if I have a credit card at a zero balance that I can use or a 0% offer, then that can help things along the way as well. So now I'm gonna do 7,990.47 minus 229.79 for the third month. That would put us in January or February of 2020 being the third month and we're, we're in November right now. So we're like halfway done with November, more than halfway done with November. Um, talking to this person uh, earlier this week or last week. So I'm not really counting this month, but that'll be to his advantage. So now the expenses are, we got income going in. Expenses are now 7,000, 760, 68 money coming out of the HELOC the rest staying in okay now let's take a look 13,123.90 minus the income for the month plus expenses puts me at 12,384.8406 and this is the third month maybe I'm in February of 2020 by that time I figured December January February and like I said, I want to go about six months. And the very next thing I'm going to do, once I reach six months, right, the goal is to try and get that balance down as low as possible. I want to see if I can chunk at this. This is my next debt that I, you know, would what would like to really hit. Because that's a, it's a credit card, it's costing me a lot of interest. And that's a pretty high payment for a small balance like that. Notice how 10,000, I'm at 235. That seems, you know, okay, but like this, Seems like the bill should have been like maybe 80 a month or 100 a month, but it's a little bit higher. So I do want to tackle that. These would be inconvenient to try to tackle. Obviously, the properties would be inconvenient to try to tackle because the payments are just way too high, you know. And then same with this, you know, this, it wouldn't make sense to go after the big ones. This is where that debt snowball mindset comes into play. You tackle like the small ones, but it's the way we're tackling it, right? We're going to be tackling it through the HELOC pretty much shifting interest and retaining cash flow the whole way through. So let's look at the numbers, 12,384.06 minus income again, plus expenses. Whoops, made a mistake. 12,384.06 minus 7,000. 11,644.22. We're in the fourth month, 11,000. 644.22. Now, obviously, this person's a business owner. What could he be doing trying to bring in more income during this time, right? Could be bringing in more income and could also uh, see what else, what other things that we can cut back on that would retain more cash flow for us just for a temporary period of time going into that, you know, conservation mode that. Grant talks about where you just don't spend money, you know, you minimalize, conserve, short period of time, 
so that we can get explosive growth, uh, so that we can get back on track, back into investing again, finding a better partner that's more reliable, more responsible. You learn from your mistakes and you keep things going. So 11644.22 minus income, you know, and you can see, you know, this ain't going so fast, right? You're like, shoot, man. Bounce went from 14,144 and now we're at 10,904.38. So even though it's not going as fast as we would want it to, it is going a hell of a lot faster than if we were just doing that snowball with 295.05 cash flow. Really, this money would be getting eaten up by interest every single day if I was to throw it either over here or at the HELOC. You know, it would just be, it would be really, really tough to really get the same results. And that's why we want to combine the two. We want to conserve, you want to pull back, and then we want to leverage what we do have in terms of debt tools to start shifting. Another thing that we can do is look for some credit card offers at 0% for a period of time on, on uh, purchases, right, or balance transfers, just so that we can shift debt from interest to no interest. And if it doesn't cost me anything to do it, then I'm gonna look into that because that would be very healthy. And another thing is, because he's a business owner, maybe there's a possibility to actually shift some of this personal debt over to the business and also save a bunch of money on interest if he can get access to some more debt tools, right? And that would retain quite a bit of money uh, on our hands and that would be you know, really, really smart. Like for example, this right here, I believe is a credit card and it's like sometimes there's credit cards that their monthly payment is like five or 7% of the balance um, and it makes it like a really high payment. If all we did was shift that to like a 0%, well then the monthly minimum payment would drop. I would pay that monthly minimum payment for that duration of the 0% and redirect the difference to my cash flow, to my debt tool, to pay off more bad debt and speed up my cash flow gain. So that's an, you know, another smart little strategy there, thing to think about is to be constantly thinking of ways that I can leverage my credit to my advantage so it can put me in a better position. So that was the fourth, fifth. So what I'm doing right now is like a worst case scenario here. So by the sixth month, I'm at 10,164, five, four plus interest, right? Maybe I'm at like 10,500. Obviously, if we could potentially find something over here redirect more cash flow, go into conservation mode, bring in more income, maybe do a deal, bring in extra money. Whatever goes down, we wanna make sure we're driving everything to the HELOC. So it's like we're paying two debts at the same time. We're, we're knocking down the HELOC and then we're preparing to make a chunk towards here that would get my cash flow up again by another you know, 188 or so. So this boy with February, March, April, May, May 2020, worst case scenario, here's where I'm at. Still can't do anything. Then I'll probably go another three months and just keep it going. Just keep it going, right? Just stick with it. But like I said, we wanna be looking at these because we wanna speed this up, right? When you start off with you know, real low cash flow, it's hard to pick up steam. That's why we, we're doing all these different moves to try to you know, pick up steam. Um, and obviously there's, this is like a golden rule, 70, 30, trying to live on 70% of what you make, retain the other 30% for yourself. You know, you pay yourself first, save for taxes, cash flow, savings, investing, all that. If I had 30% of his income that wasn't going towards bills, my goodness, could, could this get sped up even faster? Okay. So that's just a quick example of like, give you an idea of like, you know, what to do if you're a business owner, or maybe you're just someone that just like got piled on to some debt and you're like, holy crap, what do I do? I'm negative. Here are some ideas to help you with. And then the pathway to take during that time.